My name is Anthony Magnan, and I'm the head of Applied Vehicle Research at Verizon. And I'm excited to work with the, the hackers of the world uh, on the Hack Ohio Hackathon being hosted at the Ohio State University. Uh, I have the advantage of working in an industry that's very forward thinking, and my job is to basically understand how the industry is going to work with the next connected and autonomous vehicle of the future. And I'm going to help you guys understand exactly what this hackathon is going to be about. So let's get started. This is a proprietary and safe harbor statement just to basically say that the things that you see here are very forward thinking and that it cannot be used to make financial decisions, things like that. So just uh, take a quick glance at it and then we'll move on accordingly. So you're, everybody's thinking like, oh, Verizon, what, what do they do other than provide us our really cool cell phone technologies and applications at our fingertips? Well, Verizon and other mobile network operators are working to advance safety features on such platforms such as the connected and autonomous vehicle of the future. Uh, this is exactly how this is starting to come into for, into play. So you have you know our basic cellular technology, our 5G technology, we, we, it's progressed from 3G, 4G, and now we're into our 5G, 5G capability, but it's so much more than just a cell phone uh, type of environment. We have other functions that, uh, the, behind the scenes that cellular technology also enable. Uh, some of these functions, and you'll, you'll learn as we get, go through this uh, more uh, and understand it more, but some of these functions include network slicing, uh, mobile edge computing, and connected infrastructure. Um, and to grow that even more, we have other utilities that we can actually utilize, such as a IoT platform that controls all of the IoT devices across an entire architecture a net sense with another IoT control plane. Uh, RTK, this is a really great product that Verizon came out with last year. It's called Real Time, it stands for Real Time Kinematics. And what it is, it is enables GPS to be, today as we know it, is about, about five meters of accuracy that it allows it to operate in. RTK in, in conjunction with GPS can go from five meters of accuracy to five centimeters of accuracy. So greatly enhancing the capability of an already an existing technology. With that cellular connection that Verizon offers, as long as you can maintain that connection, you have the ability to have sub-centimeter level accurate GPS coordinates at any IoT device. Pretty groundbreaking stuff. Uh, on top of that, cellular also in very is highly encrypted. And we add additional layers of encryption, which we'll go into further uh, down the line. Uh, things uh, that we at the Applied Vehicle Research Team, what we're directly responsible for is the Vita X platform, the cellular vehicle to everything connectivity. Um, that's what this, is, this will be based off of. Your challenge is going to be a Vita X platform. Um, again, we'll go into detail that in a few slides. And it will also cover the fleet tel telematics how that those large amounts of vehicles such as uh, your delivery package services and things of that nature, how they're all interconnected, able to communicate with their uh, their their end uh, their end user and their control platform. Uh, some of the major points that this these technologies offer is seamless global coverage through operator and aggregated partnerships. So we what that means is that we can't do this alone as a mobile network operator. We have to reach out to partners to help us enable a lot of these functions. Uh, I'll give you an example for the mobile edge, edge computing platform. Uh, everybody's very familiar about how uh, the cloud infrastructure works, where if you take a picture, it goes into the cloud and it's stored there. Uh, you can access that from other different devices. This mobile edge computing platform allows you to take that picture and put it closer to the end user instead of having to transport it all the way to a different server system someplace else in some different location. It's going to be that closer to the edge or to the end user. So instead of having to take three seconds to access that picture or that movie or that video, 
Uh, it, it takes less than a, a, a microsecond to access. And then you can have access to all of that data in a, in a much faster format. So that's what mobile edge computing does. And one of our primary partners in mobile edge computing, edge computing is AWS, Amazon Web Services. They work very closely with us on the development of these types of applications on a regular basis. Again, proving that we can't do this on our own. We have to collaborate in a partnership to get these types of additional features to work as they're designed. Um, IoT platform that enables customers and partners to develop large scale latency sensitive automotive applications at the edge. So this is the primary reason that we want to work with mobile edge computing from a VDX standpoint. VDX need, requires low latency, which is the time it takes from the end user to the compute and then back uh, to operate in a safety critical type of environment. Not only that, that it requires low latency, but it requires a lot of reliability. Reli reliability meaning a, where you're going to send the information and that you know that information will, will be delivered and then sent back as it was, as it was created. That's a high reliability type of connection. Uh, you also need uh, a large amount of throughput which is, if anybody's familiar with the RF environments, throughput is the amount of data that can be sent through a radio access network. So when you see your cell phone and you see those bars at the top, not only is it, it's taking a whole bunch of measurements of how your RF environments is actually operating them. And throughput is one of those measurements. And then we also, uh, work with the smart cities integration for VDX applications for autonomous vehicle enablers. So all of our original equipment manufacturers that are out there today, uh, Ford, GM, Toyota, Tesla, they're all looking for integration into infrastructure. Every time you drive down the road, next time you take a look at one of the light poles or at the, uh, at the intersection, at an intersection, you see the traffic control lights Look at the top of these poles. Look at the, the the equipment that you see there. You're going to see a lot more than just light poles there, and then the lines that will hold the traffic control lights. You're going to see things such as cameras, lidar sensors, and other roadside unit technologies that are enabling these type of con connections for the infrastructure. These are important. These these Actually, these data set access points are important to better accurately depict on what goes on at any intersection. So we can make these types of environments more safe for the vehicle and the vulnerable road user, uh, like such as pedestrians, bicyclists, motorcycles, to be more safe in, in uh, a very, uh, very unsafe environment. Uh, we also do advanced fleet management systems supporting OEM embedded equipment. So those, pack like we talked about before, the those package delivery systems that are constantly on our roadways, that they are able to understand exactly their environment, surrounding environments as well. Because there's a lot more of them than there are of uh, the, uh, the the VRUs that are on their roadway in that particular area. Okay, so this is addressing priorities for community safety. So one of the major points that we are doing uh, to enable the VDX architecture of the future is that we have certain adherences that we got to abide by. We, uh, we need to have it as a global scale and capability. So not only because it needs, can it be deployed here in North America as a mobile network operator, we have to be I cognizant of the fact that this needs to scale across the entire globe because this technology will save lives across the globe. So we have to be able to understand the capabilities of what each region brings to the table and be able to interoperate within those confines. Uh, innovative smart vehicle services that generate new revenue streams. All right, you're gonna hear the term as we start getting down here that the data is the new oil. All right, so in vehicles, I wanna, gonna, are going to be one of the most crucial data points that we're going to be able to access to under better understand 
the uh, the safety patterns and the the critical systems that are will enable this the most the safe environment of the future. Those data sets from the vehicle are going to be key in all of that. Uh, robust security for connected and autonomous vehicles. Everybody has serious concerns about allowing driverless vehicles to be on the road because of security concerns. And we have addressed that in, in a lot of new ways, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit further. Highly reliable, scalable 5G connectivity with new bandwidth intense, intensive latency sensitive services. So that CV to X platform that we talked about, that's exactly what this does. That 5G and MEC enable the CV to X architecture as it's designed. Develop safety and automated transportation solutions. So again, going into the coexisting of other users or other companies to come in and help us co-develop and these safety and automated transportation solutions. And there's no doubt about it, Verizon best in class connectivity with cloud solution partnerships. Again, we are we are always going to be you know, forward thinking when it comes to the what is going to bring the cellular connectivity. What what, what are those next you know, big things that are gonna bring cellular to the next level. So in this hackathon, what is the challenge? So what we see here is what the challenge actually consists of. We're gonna develop a solution that solves for an existing road safety problem that incorporates ultra low latency communication across endpoints using 5G and MEC architecture. So not only are we dealing with that ultra low latency, but we're also, and with the 5G, we're also dealing with a high amount of reliability. All right, so I can tell you that in, in our past proof of concepts that we've been able to be successful with, we're seeing upwards of six, between five and six nines of reliability. So that is a, a numbers we haven't seen on a cellular network before and ever. And as on a commercial standpoint, so this is the the actual architecture that you'll be dealing with in this hackathon. Because make no mistake about this, the this, the environments that we're we're giving you and the confines that you're actually operating in are what's available to you today in a commercial radio access network, a commercial cellular network. So keep that in mind when you're starting to think about ways of designing new use cases, because. This, this is exactly how we would see it today. And if we, the whole point about this to see exactly what you guys are thinking about so we can start maybe thinking in that same direction. And maybe one day you come and work for us and then you can, you can start working on new and inventive ways on finding new use cases for these types of safety critical systems. What are your solution parameters for this hackathon? So, the solution should adhere to utilizing known devices in a known environment using standard architecture and messaging protocols, such as 3GBP standards 14 and 15, and messages that are offered in the standardized uh, uh, version from SAEJ2735. To see more about these parameters, uh, look at your challenge sheet for more details. And if you have any questions, go to your mentors and they will be able to assist you in that. But like I said, Everything that you guys will be dealing with is exactly the same thing that we deal with on a regular basis, using the same standardized messaging protocols and the same architectures. So what is the value stack of what is, and the systems that you'll be actually operating in? So obviously overall and encompassing, we have the security and compliance that comes without saying, because we've, in our business, line of business, we've always come to just know that our encryption, both end-to-end, -end, has been developed and in implemented for years, and it's the most security, the most secure messaging pl platform ever created. Um, and within that, we have the the cloud, the edge, the network, and the vehicle. So we're going to take this as step by step. So the end user being the vehicle in this case, I would actually say that there's a, a subset of that and being the VRU, the vulnerable road user, and uh, in, in that too, but. Right now, we're just gonna use the vehicle as being the major point. So the vehicle communicates with the network, the network then communicates with the edge, and then the edge communicates with the cloud. So remember that every single step you take going up and down in this type 
of diagram. You're adding an additional layer of complexity as well as an additional layer of latency. So what does that mean? When you're, when you're doing ad adding additional latency, that means you're adding additional time. So when you're thinking about you know, those safety critical applications, we've come to know that in our line of work, 100 milliseconds round trip is the minimum threshold in which we can, or maximum threshold, sorry, that we can actually operate in for a safety critical system. Now, maybe if you just wanna provide an information type of use case, maybe it's a, a micro weather station, maybe it's something like that, but you gotta think about like every single, if you're gonna put that in the cloud because it's cheaper, then you're gonna also add additional latency. So maybe that would be relevant in that case that you, uh, the end user doesn't need to have that bit of information within a second or less. But if you want to do it in those use cases that are designed to do in that safety critical threshold of 100 milliseconds, you really need to consider the technology that, you're, that you wanna utilize. And uh, within each one of those types of environments, you have a subset of different features that you need to adhere to as well. In vehicle experiences for the vehicle, the telematics units themselves, the vehicle to vehicle and security. Vehicle to vehicle is outside, it's still part of the CV to X architecture, but, not, <clears throat> but it does not fall under the, the purview of a CV to X type of environment. Vehicle to vehicle is just a technology that allows vehicle to speak to other vehicles in and of itself, not utilizing a radio access network such as 5G. But we do, there is a certain solution that we have in place that will allow vehicles to talk to other vehicles through the network, which we call to vehicle or V to N to V, and that's vehicle to network to vehicle. But this V to V is a separate entity all in itself. And you also have sensors and ADAS features. So these sensors and ADAS features are what allow technology uh, to, uh, to further advance connected and autonomous vehicle of the f of future. LIDAR systems, cameras, radar, ultrasounds, V to X, object detection and classification algorithms, in vehicle compute and sensor data orchestration. These are all needed for a level three or even going into level four vehicle, uh, uh, automated vehicles of the future. I mean, there are certain things that we work on every day to limit the need for these. And I can go into depth in that uh, face to face with you guys if you would like to learn more. But there are ways to uh, actually have a lot of these uh, in vehicle compute and sensor data orchestrations being done off the vehicle. Again, you probably think about <laughs> exactly what would be utilizing to do that. Um, so the V2V security direct communications utilizing PC5, which is a separate protocol off of what we call from our cellular devices use, and that's UU. Capital U, small u. That's the communication protocol that your cellular devices use to communicate with its surrounding environment, specifically the radio access network. The radio access network then com communicates through public IP to either the, the edge or into the cloud and then back. Telematics uh, manages sending and, sending and receiving vehicle data as well as network access device and SIM telemetry data ingestion. These are systems that are already in place in most vehicles today. Uh, this, the network access allows you to, these vehicles to update their firmware and their software pretty regularly. Um, and it allows telemetry data ingestion. So it knows when you, when you click a button for your, your route, you wanna reroute out of the traffic on your navigation app. This is the telemetry data that it's actually utilized to do so. Um, some in-vehicle experiences such as uh, those navigation systems, like I said, but infotainment, that's become a really big hot button uh, application for most vehicle platforms nowadays, as well as autom automotive operating systems. Uh, we are starting to see more and more voice assistance being added to vehicle platforms, as well as streaming entertainment content. Uh, machine learning at the edge is, uh, goes a part of that equation. Again, going into that sensor and ADAS feature, that we can use to, to utilize in vehicle compute and sensor data outside of the vehicle platform itself. Uh, going into the network side of things, the V2N vehicle to network, the uh, infrastructure to network, and the, uh, the P2N, the, the pedestrian to network connectivity, and edge processing, precise positioning, RTK. You're starting to see how these things all work in collaboration with one another. 
This is exactly the point that we're trying to make. Like everything that you see here will work seamlessly together as it's designed. Uh, we're, we're getting to the point like we are setting the baseline of where everything is, and then we're starting to address the the uh, the additional use cases and developing those in proof of concept. Kind of what you guys are doing right now. Uh, the multi-axis edge compute part, the edge compute distributed architecture. These MAC units are actually being deployed across our country um, at regionally. So right now, Verizon has nine uh, different MECs uh, being deployed throughout the country with more to be de uh, deployed in the future as they are needed. Uh, the closest one to you actually is just north of you. I won't say what state, uh, but uh, it's located there, and it, it's the the actual uh, mech that you'll be using is our our what we call our sandbox mech, and it's actually located all the way in Rockland, California. But I have used that sandbox mech in multiple different use case testings, and I've been able to maintain that less than 100 millisecond safety threshold, and which you'll be able to operate in, in as well. Connected mobility solutions allowed cloud provider accelerators for automotive use case development, as well as the Verizon analytics play platforms that we operate in, the, six, the ThinkSpace IoT platforms, as well as the additional uh, location services capabilities. Uh, the cloud op op gives us building blocks, or what we uh, can call containers, that we can have the broadest and deepest set of cloud services, such as IoT management, machine learning, data lakes, and analytics, to be able to utilize and maybe that's your that's the use case that you want to start developing you want to do some um, uh, data ingestion and then you want to do some some use of that data and some new new form of uh, safety system recognition uh, that, that may be something to be looking into uh, from the cloud and our architecture uh, but you have remember you have the whole gamut of other solution sets in front of you that you can utilize. Um, and then you also have the applications that are that sit on the cloud on the edge that uh, allow for fleet management solutions, safety apps, and remote tele ops and others. This is the VDX focus areas. This is exactly what my me and my team actually developed. Uh, we worked very closely with our third party uh, uh, our third party system developers, our application developers partners within the, the software sides as well as the hardware sides. Uh, we, this is what we look at when we start to go to the ideation sessions and where can we work in the next level of proof of concept. So this is all encompassing of what we do every day. At some point we go to this chart and we say, okay, we have a use case this is where it fits. This is where we're, the direction it needs to go to. This is the next level of where we can include into other additional platforms. This is where we can keep it, and this is how we utilize it for uh, data analytics, data aggregation, and most importantly, the, the, the monetization. So connectivity is established with new revenue streams as you go from the use case on up upwards. So. Uh, my, my company being a, a Fortune 500 company, we need to make sure like we are able to maintain the ability to continue to build out our use case development platform and monetization is a part of that as well. Uh, we do have altruistic intentions where you know life safety is driving us to this point. Uh, but to be able to continually be able to, to develop new use cases that are fit in, the, under, in this chart, we need to constantly make sure that we can also do this from day to day. Application use cases, segments, platforms, connectivity, and data types are all part of that initial ask of where does this use case actually fit into? And it needs to adhere to this chart as we just start developing it down the, the pipeline. Some of the safety use cases that you may want to consider. Um, we have basic broadcasts. Uh, sending BS basic safety messages, pedestrian safety messages, signal phasing and timing and map messages to vehicles and pedestrian cyclists. This is just one of the multitude of examples that we can look at. Uh, forward collision warning for collision avoidance systems. You're going to see that 
most of the vehicles that we see on the roadways nowadays have these advanced safety features. Um, a lot of them are already integrated into them, such as AEB, the automatic emergency braking. You have co collision avoidance systems such as uh, haptic warnings of getting too close to a vehicle. You, some of these vehicles now have uh, following systems where you can put your cruise on and it will break the vehicle for you. These are all collision avoidance assistance systems that we have for our advanced driving assist systems that we have on our vehicle platforms of today. You imagine where we're gonna be in 10 years from now. These ADAS features are gonna be, are gonna be more commonplace and they're gonna be more intelligent. And this is exactly where this type of technology is, is starting to bring us. This, the cellular connect, connectivity is going to enable a lot more use cases when it comes to safety, um, safety ADAS features of the future. Some additional safety use cases that you may wanna consider Vulnerable road user discovery, as well as signal phasing awareness. Signal phase awareness is a, is a newer version that we're starting to tap into. And the reason why that is, is because a lot of our vehicle OEMs are starting to realize that battery life is, is starting to you know, get better, but you know, having the ability to understand uh, traffic patterns in real time will save battery life and extend distances uh, by a, a quite an, an enormous factor of, of energy savings. So having the signal phase awareness uh, embedded into a vehicle where we're already, a lot of us are already using uh, smart navigation systems on the vehicle themselves or in, onto your cell phone device even. Uh, when we have those, applications such as Waze integrated into your human machine interface of your vehicles, your HMIs, you're more likely to miss certain areas that will cause, you know, 100% electrified vehicles to lose additional energy. So we can bypass those by utilizing these, the systems of the future, the CBIT-X systems. All right, what are your, gonna be your deliverables uh, on this hackathon? So. We want to, what we want to see, and I will be one of your judges, so I can actually speak to this. We want to be able to clearly describe how your solution can benefit the community safety. Uh, where, where possible, support your target impact with data. So I've already provided that the, the data connections that you're going to be actually able to test into. You're going to find that on your, your sheet that you have in front of you. Uh, those KPI or those APIs, those APNs are there clearly and your messages, your, your messages that we use on a regular basis are right there for your reference. Whether you choose to use them is completely up to you, but I can tell you that this is the exact messages that we see and the, the exact protocols that we have, that Rockland Mac is actually in there too, that you can actually go in and start playing around with. You're gonna be containerized in a way that you won't or mitigate all risk to our commercial network, but you have the ability to, to actually utilize the same messages that we do every day. We, have, we want you to be able to create visuals for how your solution would interact with drivers, vulnerable road users, et cetera. The, pre the presentation will, will involve community involvement as is critical for these types of solutions to work. Make a presentation that excites people into action. As you can see, I'm very excited about everything that I do on a regular basis. I'm going to be looking to you guys and girls to be able to actually understand exactly what it is that we're trying to accomplish and try to be as excited as I am. I mean, this, is, this stuff is groundbreaking technology. You guys can be on the forefront of everything that we do. Uh, if you, this, this is what this, this was designed for, is to exactly excite you guys to be able to understand how, this, how these systems work and how we're gonna bring it into the next phase. So I hope to, that you guys uh, have a better understanding of what it is that we do every day and why this is important. Some of the judging that, we'll be, that we're gonna be doing on each one of your challenges is we're gonna, does the solution solve the challenge at hand? Um, if you have any questions, like I said, you could, you could ask one of your mentors if, you, if you're not sure exactly about the, the challenge itself. 
Uh, we are here to help you as best that we can un to better understand how these systems work and wh where exactly can this take us in into the next iterations. Some uh, the originality of the solution. I gave you guys a, a couple of examples of things that we've already been able to accomplish, but maybe you can. There's another path that you can take that will take that idea and make it that much better. Is it something similar already in place? If so, why is this better? If it's not, then why is it be beneficial? Like, these are the, some of the parameters that we're going to be looking at. Clear and near-term path to adoption. All right, have you thought about the obstacles? Are there any secondary benefits and to whom and why would we pay for it and why? Well, how, who would pay for it and why? So, all right, so we all think in like pie in the sky ideas. You know, I'm as guilty as everybody else is. I would like to see, you know, complete level five automated vehicles on our roadways in 10 years, but that's just not a feasible approach because the technology hasn't even been developed yet to allow that to happen. So do I have a plan in my in mind to get us there? Sure, but I need to start working on, you know, ideas that's gonna be able to be the low hanging fruit. Where's our near wins that we can start developing additional use cases off of to get to that point? The one thing I'll say is that this CV to X platform is not the thing. CV to X is going to be the thing that gets us to the thing. So if that makes sense, um, you'll you'll have a better idea of what it is that we're, we're what we're trying to do. And also the last point is it scalable? All right, this I run into this every single day. So can we scale this? Can we use this to scale and then produce it to be able to be uh, utilized for the entire use our entire user base? Can is it is it can, can it be done? I mean, we love those pie in the sky ideas. I mean, that's what it's the daughter of invention. But we still need to make sure that we we can stay grounded and develop these use cases into scalability. That is a huge part of what we do every day. And that's it for my uh, presentation today. So, like I said, any further questions, comments, or concerns, go to your mentors. And uh, I will be on site too. So if you have any questions for me, you by 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 all means um, seek me out, and I'll I'll try my best to help you out as 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 I can. Good luck to you all, and I'm looking forward to a very successful hackathon.